If you've been watching our channel for a while, you might remember that back last year we were in Tinga and when we were down there, Kathy at the Emporium mentioned Topper's Wines, which is not far from Tinga. We've been wanting to come to Topper's Wines ever since then to see what it's like and to show you guys. Today's the day we finally teed up with Mark and we're going to head into Topper's Wines. One of the things we weren't sure of is how the road would be because we've just got a two-wheel drive uh, Toyota Camry and we've got to head down this dirt road so we're going to show you that if you have a two-wheel drive you can get to Topper's Wines as well and we'll show you what's down there. Let's go. Topper's Mountain Wines is a stone's throw from Tinga. Entry is via the Guyra Road down a dirt drive which is navigable by two-wheel drive vehicles. Mark Kirby, the founder of Topper's Mountain Wines, has produced some of the most exquisite wines over the years, since 1998, winning numerous awards. However, the journey hasn't been an easy one. A few years ago, the vineyard faced a significant setback due to the Tinga bushfires, resulting in the loss of 20% of the vineyard. But the team at Topper's Wines didn't back down. They rebuilt bigger, better than ever and now they have dreams for the future and we want to tell you about them. All right, so we're down at the cellar. We've got Mark here, and Mark, we've, we've heard about Toppers. It's a really unique wine growing place, and the terroir that you have here is part of the reason why it's so unique. So can you just tell us all things Toppers wines? Well, it's how long have we got? Um, <laughs> it, it's um, on the terroir issue, this is, this is a, um, you can see this red soil here mm. is, um, is volcanic ash. Yeah. So it's not actually, degraded basalt, there's very little of this type of soil in Australia right. at this sort of altitude. Ah, right. The only two okay. places, or there's three places, there's here, yep. there's um, Orange, mm -hmm. and there's a place called Whitlands in uh, in Victoria. Oh, Beechworth. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah just know east yeah, of Beechworth. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so they're the only places that have got this soil and cool climate. Yep. So it's so in that sense, it's it's pretty special. Yeah. Um, they're they're beautiful free draining soils. They're deep soils, so the, so they don't vines don't get wet feet, and cool climate. I mean, that's the other thing that sort of drives what's going on. Yeah. Is you know the altitude means that that um, you know you're very cool climate. So do grapes grow well through the winter, or is that too cold a time? No, in winter they're 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 dormant. Right. So they lose all the leaves. You'll see them now. Just starting to, to sort of go, start to be go, go golden. Yeah, yeah. And you can see up, we'll go up and have a look there, but up yep. on the hill, um, they've lost probably half their leaves up there already. Right. So, yep. so they, they can handle winter temperatures here easily. Yep. Down to sort of minus eight or 10, They're grapes fine. can handle, but below that, yep. it's an issue for them. So then spring, everything comes back to life again. Yep. Flowers, grapes. Yep. Harvest in summer-ish, would that be right? Yes, vintage is from early February to normally end of April, early May, something like that for us. Yeah. But this year, we've finished on the 2nd of April, so we're a month ahead wow. of schedule. okay. So there's a bit of climate change for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it definitely a, is. Yeah, it makes a difference. It makes, it's made a big difference this year. I mean, you guys would have noticed in Armidale, this year was... I mean, normally we get, you know, four or five or 10 or 12 days of warm weather with maybe a few hot days in the middle of it. Yeah. Then you get a southerly comes through and you get three or four days of relatively cool weather. Yep. We didn't get that cool weather no. at all this year. No. And as a result, the vines are a month early. Yeah, wow. Wow. And the grounds you've got here, you've done a whole heap of work throughout this year, yeah. all the landscaping. Um, guinea fowl coming in, brand new <laughs> cellar and everything. So, yeah. yeah. There's been a lot happening. There has. So, I might pop in there and have a bit of a look around in there. Yep, let's and... do it. So, 
So Mark, this, this setup here is absolutely fantastic. Love all the woodwork, beautiful design. What do you use the space for? Weddings, uh, parties, what do, you, what do you do out here? Well, we're just starting to work that out, but just by word of mouth, we've got two weddings booked. We're going to be involved in events and obviously sell a door and the focus is going to be on wine yep. rather than events. I mean, you know, we're in the business of making and selling wine. So, yeah. And so if someone wants to come out to the cellar door, uh, they don't just turn up, they need to give you a day or two's notice. How does that work? Give us a call, yeah, by appointment, because um, because we don't have any dedicated um, cellar door staff. Mm. So the people that you get in the cellar door are actually people that work in the vineyard. Yep. So, you know, we need to be able to coordinate what they're doing in the vineyard and people, people visiting. But um, please just hop online, and you'll see on the on the on the website there's a there's a visit, visit our vineyard tab, yep. and in there you can make a booking, and uh, and or just give us a call, and and uh, and we'll do the same thing. Yeah, sounds good. And you're open. I saw on the website you're open pretty much every day except Christmas and Easter Monday, and there was another one. Yeah, well we try we try to take Mondays off, yep. Tuesday to, to Sunday, Good Friday, Christmas Day. Yeah. And the only other days that we're not available is, is if for some reason, you know, Scott or I or Joe aren't available. Yep. And, and we're in, you know, we haven't done it yet, but as part of, of, of getting this going, we'll start, you know, sort of Sunday sippers or something where people can just come out and sit around and have a glass of wine. And, yeah, yeah. and we've we actually got a pizza oven here to install yet. It's not built yet. Ah. So we'll just do that sort of yeah. casual stuff. At the moment, we're only doing tastings which are you know relatively formal yeah sit around and have a glass of wine and enjoy the view and what a view what a fantastic place on the deck at looking at that view seeing all the way to Glen Innes <laughs> yeah that's just awesome and this first 15 rows here is what we call a fruit salad and when we initially established the the, the vineyard this was the all the tryhards these were all the varieties so we planted a different variety every row Ah. So it was really just to see what worked well, yep. and um, you know, and what sort of suited the climate. Yep. And it's because of this that the focus has ended up being um, alternate varieties. I mean, we we didn't make a conscious decision and say, right, we you know we think it'd be a good marketing idea to you know to, to have all these weird varieties. Yeah. Through this this process of of the fruit salad, they've actually selected us. In, ah, right. and, and you know, so the ones that have performed well here just happen to have been all these weird varieties like Tanat and and um, Gewurz Tremina and Tempranillo and wow. Chenin Blanc and Manseng and stuff that most people have never heard of. So, <laughs> Cab Sav and Chardonnay. It's amazing how responsive they are to, to the you know to what's around them. Yeah, yeah. So these yeah. lake grapes. Yeah, that's they're just. Yeah, they're, 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 that's a that's a, um, a second or third or fourth crop. See, that's only oh. that's only flowered, you know, probably a month ago. Yep. So it's you know it's just way way late. We got here. I think this is some um, Viognier, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So they're both Viognier. Oh, so it's got the names on the ends. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Viognier. We need to, we need to re-black them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to re-black them. So here, here's here's a couple of grafts for you. All right, so graft. So, so Who's about grafting? There's, there's, a, there's a bunch that must have been bird damaged so they didn't pick it. Oh yeah. See how it's all gone? Yeah, right. Nothing left to it. No. So the birds just pick them out? Yeah. Or they, and then they've you, just you shriveled? Can see, you can see where the yeah. birds have pecked it and then it's just desiccated. Because once it's, once, once it's damaged, yep. the, the vine aborts the berry. Ah, and uh, and so this is you know because we're close to these trees here, you get a lot of bird bird damage on the end. Even though you you know got nets and everything on, they still bloody get in the little buggers. <laughs> <laughs> so if one grape or is damaged, that whole no, not the whole bunch, no, just that that just in, individual that berry. Yeah, right. The vinyl abort, but you can see on this one, I mean, a whole lot of them have been pecked. Yeah, I mean, the, most of them have been pecked. Yeah, We've all got holes in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what happened in the fire was 
you know, you know, he had grass around the around the vines and stuff like this. So, so the fire was quite hot down here, you know, at, yeah. at ground level. Yeah. And so the the ones that got into strife had ring barked them down here. Ah. And and a lot of the own rooted ones reshot, but because this is the fruit salad, mm. and we graft everything, the rootstock is not necessarily what we want at the top. Oh, so, yeah, so this might be this here. might be Chardonnay down here, yeah, but we actually right. want in this case it's Viognier yeah. as the, as the as the the fruiting body. Yeah. So what you do is we've had, after the fire we've had to cut this one off. You can see there's the original the original oh, vine. Yeah, yeah. It's put up a shoot. We've yep. trained that shoot up, and I can't even remember what this was originally, but it certainly wasn't wasn't Viognier. So we've trained this up and it's been Malbec or whatever it happened to be. Then once this, this got big enough to graft, we've had to graft a Viognier bud onto it, which we did there. And there's the last bit of the grafting tape left. Ah. So that's Viognier. That's whatever the original vine was. Okay. So grafting, is that where you cut them on an angle and then they line up? Yeah, you just got up? a really sharp knife and you just do, do a little cut a little, and take a little slab off and then you take a bud that bud you wouldn't do it now but in yep. winter and you get a really sharp oh, knife yeah. and you just slide through there yeah right and so you got that bud on a flat surface yep you plonk it on there and then you wrap it up with, oh. with all that tape and away it goes so from that one little bud that's it brand new, new. That's, wow that's, that's, that's the new vine and and there's an older one behind you you can see that's one that's been done so th this is done this is probably two years old and that one is probably six or seven years old wow you can see the tape still on it yeah yeah but you know it's now it's a big yep strong vine and will this ever spread out of here again yeah it will it it'll, will. it'll it'll and you'll just trim it'll, it off it'll put shoots out up here sometimes but eventually it gives up and that one's probably old enough for it to have given up yeah. because it's got so many growing points up here now yeah. But it, why would it put energy yeah. into growing down there when that's it's got all this happening up here? Yep. Yeah. Shiraz. Oh, that's Shiraz. Right, okay. Yep. Here we go. Yeah, so that's been grafted. That, um, you can, up on this, this side of the hill up there, the Hill of Dreams, used to be Shiraz, but it's too close to all those trees. And we used to get a lot of um, um, eucalyptus pickup. You oh. get a mentho, very mentholy character in the wine. Wow. And... Um, and so, so, you know, it wasn't a good spot for red. So we got rid of them. That, that's all whites up there now. And then so we wanted some Shiraz. So we grafted it onto this, these three vines here, three rows here. Yeah. But here's, here's some, some very old grafts that were done 15 years ago. Now look at that. <laughs> that's a graft. So all that's oh, left wow. of, of the original bit is, is, is there. That one so that's little... the original vine. That's the new vine. And it's just completely consumed. The... And for someone like me who wouldn't even know, I'd just say that's one whole plant. Always has been. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't even yeah. know. And you see this one's doing it, doing it a bit tough, but it's actually got crown gall. No, it's... We should probably get rid of that. It's broken off already by the feel of it. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a virus. Oh, there. right. And that's, you see how it's, it's doing poorly? Yeah, it's really struggling. So that needs to be cut off. But and then, then you regraft again. Yeah, it'll shoot from it'll shoot from the ground again, and we'll we'll go around again. That's amazing. You move reds down to a white root. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, so the, the rootstock doesn't matter. You can have a red rootstock and a and a white, and white. scion. Yeah. No problem at all. Like yeah. Yeah. There so there's go. another one that's that's um, you know an old graft, and it's you know you've. Unless you knew what you're talking about, you wouldn't realise yeah, that. No. You're you can see there's a hole on the other side there, oh, yeah. where the where the, the old bits rotted off. Yeah, and that's it. And here's another one that's that's we've had to replant. So we had to go right back to square one for this fella. Ah, right. So he's he's been replanted from scratch, and he's just got his first little just got his head out of the out of the vine guard. Oh, it's a vine guard. Yeah. Right, okay. Mm. So what would have happened to that one? Just a disease? Well, or just no, it would have been killed by the by the. Oh, the bushfire because the fires we came through the state forest after the bushfires and saw all that new growth everywhere and now yeah. it's all 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fantastic again. Yeah. So you were impacted here. How many fines would you have lost? We lost about 20%. Yeah, right. Killed about 20%. And if you if you sort of get down here on your knees and look through here, oh, yeah. everywhere you see a vine guard, yeah, is a damaged damaged vine from the fire that's oh. still regenerating. Yep. Yeah, you can but, see them; they stand out. Yeah. yeah but some some are, are, are finished, so that one there was as well. But he's now big enough for us to have taken the vine guard off. Yep. So he's under control again. And the one beside him as well, and the one beside him, and the one beside him. <laughs> So it's a lot of work. You can't just plant a vine and drink wine six months later. No, no, no. It'd be nice if that was the case, but then there'd be a lot more wine around than there is already. So, and you call it the Hill of Dreams. Why hill, is it called the, the Hill of Dreams? Oh, it's a, it's a sort of a, it's the first bit of the bit that we planted. So in that sense, it was the sort of, you know, it was the beginning of the dream of a, of yeah. a vineyard and a winery. And so that's what we called it. A hope and dream, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we dream exactly. about it, let's hope it goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'd probably be worth our while hopping in the car and we can drive up there on because you get a really good view from the top of the hill. Yeah, yeah. And that water or that dam, is that yours or is yeah. that? That's yep. yours? Yep. Right. And is that low or is it? Oh, it's down a bit. It's down a bit. It's down probably that far. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's a big dam, isn't it? Yeah, it is a big dam. And I guess you'd need a big dam for keeping everything going. Oh, uh, when the vines were young, you'd, you'd need to irrigate them. Mm -hmm. But now, we don't irrigate them much. Because, right. you know, we get 600 mils of rain in the growing season. Yeah. So, you know, it's only in exceptional circumstances that we really need to irrigate them. Yeah. And uh, and, and that that dam just fills just, itself off runoff. Yeah, it would do. That's not a very big area, probably only two or three hundred hectares, but that's enough to keep it full. Full. Or pretty much full. So in the drought, did that go dry or was it still with enough water to no, keep everything it going? Just ran out. Yeah, wow. But but we then we've got a there's a bore there, you can see the diesel tanks oh, down yeah. there. Yeah. So we can pump out of that into right. there and, and which we did because um there's massive Buddy Murray cod in there. Oh, you wanted to keep that in there. And, as and well. we didn't we didn't we wanted to make sure we didn't, you know, let it get too too low or it would have killed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we've caught the biggest one we've caught twenty four kilos. Wow. Bloody big fish, fish that long. And so here's the Nebbiolo. So this is the the table wine version of the sparkling you had. This is 22, the oh, one you had earlier yeah. is 21. Yes. So there's only a vintage between them. Yeah. And this is what we try to produce from the Nebbiolo. Mark and his team are now setting up a cellar door for wine tasting and planning for a future Airbnb and Sunday sippers. We thank Mark for taking us on a fascinating tour of the vineyards and we were really impressed by the beauty of the place. So you guys don't miss your chance to visit Toppers Mountain Wines where you can enjoy exquisite wine in the lap of nature. Stick around with Minutes and Rates in a couple of weeks we'll be back taking you back to the Australian Celtic Festival up in Glen Innes. Stay tuned. <laughs>